Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today I've got an interesting topic for you guys and that is the difference between an Altaz mount and a German Equatorial mount. For, the, for those of you guys not familiar, my name is Vlad, I run a little Astro blog called AVT-Astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, this is kind of like another one of those videos that's kind of more oriented towards the beginner person that's kind of getting into astronomy. They don't really, you know, maybe they're looking for their first mount. They don't really know the general terminologies, how the mounts work, uh, and that type of deal. So let's get into and cover some of the basics, and maybe even you experts might learn something. Alrighty, here they are, the two contenders. So which one should we go with? Oh no, look at that. That guy's doing something weird, right? Oh, smokes, it's just rotating by itself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just turned it on and they do a um, self-alignment with these Ioptron mounts. So it'll, uh, it'll kind of stop doing that in a second. But anyhow, while that thing is kind of doing its calibration, we will start talking about the German Equatorial mount. So for all you history buffs, um, if you guys are wondering where the term German Equatorial mount comes from, I have no idea, so you know, fill me in and leave me a, like a link in the link in, or in the thing below. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this isn't really a history lesson. Um, <laughs> let's check out how this thing works. Okay, so there's two axes on both the you know Altaz mount and the German equatorial mount. The big difference is that, as you might notice, so um, this axis is supposed to be tilted, uh, and it is adjustable, as you can see here, right? Uh, to the same uh, latitude as where you're at on the earth right so I am at about 45 degrees which is you know what this is set to and the way that these are supposed to work is that kind of the primary advantage of the German equatorial mount right is that as the earth is rotating all that the mount has to do is to move slowly at the same rate of the rotation of the earth right and then you're going to track your object perfectly no matter where um loosen this clutch here no matter where the scope is pointed right you're still going to be perfectly tracking with this type of amount with it just running the motor in one axis so this axis doesn't have to turn at all all right, and kind of moving on to uh, the Altaz mount. So how do these guys work? Well, there's two axes with this guys as well, right? Uh, one is right here, so basically the scope can go up and down, and the other one's here, so it'll go side to side. And actually, let's uh, let's check that out. So this is the scope moving side to side, right? And this is the scope moving up and down. So very simple. All right, so now that we got the generals out of the way of, you know, kind of how the mounts work, uh, what is the advantage and disadvantage of both of these mount designs? Like, you know, why, why would you choose one versus the other? Well, the primary advantage with the German equatorial mount, right, is that if you're doing astrophotography, this is pretty much what you're going to get. Um, the reason for that is because even um, even if you get a perfectly tracking um, Altaz mount, what happens is since it's moving in two axes as it's tracking something through the sky, right, you're actually going to have field rotation is what it's called in your pictures and I'll post an image with, uh, of what field rotation looks like right now. Now that is only important if you're doing um, long exposure astrophotography. Uh, it actually will even show up if you're doing EAA, not as big of a deal um, because you're typically doing shorter exposures and probably not, you know, doing a total exposure that's like an hour long or anything like that. So whereas for astrophotography, you definitely will run into the issue. The other advantage of the German equatorial mount for astrophotography is that instead of running two motors for two axes, right, you're only running one motor. So that's uh, much less of a chance of uh, introducing air into your picture. So anytime even, you know, one of the axes is running, right, there's a gear in there uh, on the G11 mount section under this cover here. And... Uh, no gear is perfect, so it's always going to have some, uh, it'll introduce some tracking error, just, you know, by the way that the gear is machined. 
Um, so that eliminates one of the axis's gears, you know, guiding errors. All right, you're like, whoa, what's going on? The mounts are multiplying, right? <laughs> Uh, well, okay, so we covered some of the advantages of the German equatorial mount. Again, primarily for astrophotography, and if you are doing astrophotography, unless you're doing, like, you know, kind of more EAA, uh, that is what you want. Uh, so what's the advantages of the Altasma? I mean, they sell them, right? So, like, who the heck would want one? Well, that's why I brought this guy out. So this is kind of a much simpler uh, Altasma mount design compared to that guy. That guy has go-to, right? Um, and overall, it's a very heavy-duty Altasma, so this is a very high-end one. Uh, so, it basically lacks the advantages that are usually associated with one of these guys. <laughs> That's why I brought out this simpler one. But anyhow, yeah, these things are super lightweight. I mean, so this is a 5-inch Mac on here, right? And I could, you know, I could actually, you know, pick this up with the one arm, you know? So I use it, this is my grab and go scope that kind of sits inside my living room in there. Uh, fully set up, you know, if I'm just, you know, after a real quick look, this is what comes out. Super simple to use. I mean, what people usually love about Altaz mounts, you just grab it and you point it at whatever in the sky. Very awesome, very lightweight. The other thing that you usually... Um, do not have to deal with is that there's fewer components to an Altas mount than a German equatorial mount. Even if you're using a German equatorial mount for visual, right, you at the minimum have to bring out a counterweight uh, compared to an Altas mount, which usually does not have a counterweight. All right, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention is the comfort of using one of these mounts. Let's say if you are doing visual. Now, I, you know, I do use my German equatorial mount for visual a lot, so, you know, you can, you know, definitely use them and they work great. Uh, there is, however, one, you know, f I'd say fairly big disadvantage, depending on the type of scope that you have. If you have a scope with a long uh, tube, right, what happens is that uh, the major disadvantage that you face is that your eyepiece is going to change a lot in direction. So like, you know, check this out, right? So this is, you know, fairly high off the ground right now. You know, we're assuming that let's say this would be the eyepiece instead of the camera. So when I rotate it down here, I mean, check out how, how huge of a difference in eyepiece position that is. I mean, you know, that's a huge, huge, huge difference, right? Whereas with an Altaz mount, what's really cool is that the, eyepiece you know relatively stays at the same height you know and if you're observing in the same part of the sky i mean you know if i was sitting you know here by the scope right i really wouldn't have to move very much so whereas with that guy you do have to move a lot more which can be a you know kind of more of a hassle all right, guys, so that kind of concludes our quick intro to telescope mounts. Um, again, to kind of summarize things and bring the ship home a little bit, um, if you want an expensive, easy-to-use mount, uh, Altas might be good to go for visual. Um, if you're into astrophotography or thinking about getting into astrophotography, you definitely want a German equatorial mount. They do work well for visual as well, so if you're kind of not sure, um, you know, if you want to start out with visual, you think you're going to get into astrophotography, that's probably your better way to go as well. So anyhow, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.